Hi everybody, thanks for watching the Liturgy of the Word for Monday in the fourth week of Advent. Let's sing Waiting Here for You. Your faith can move the mountains, let the mountains move. We come with expectation, waiting. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Monday of the fourth week of Advent. Wow, we're so close to Christmas. And the readings for December 21st. And let's begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Now, remember, everybody, that uh, the readings are always going to be about the next three days. It's going to be about that first Christmas a long time ago and the drama that kind of left all that. And just, you know, we're going to hear some of the bare facts of all this that we're going to hear um, the New Old Testament uh, uh, types of the events that happened in the New Testament here. So make sure you pay attention to the first reading and the gospel today as we celebrate these next three days. And let's ask God for his mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, what I've done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. And Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Hear in kindness, O Lord, the prayers of your people, that those who rejoice at the coming of your only begotten Son in the flesh may, when at last he comes in glory, gain the reward of everlasting life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our reading from the book of the prophet Zephaniah. Shout for joy, O daughter Zion. Sing joyfully, O Israel. Be glad and exult with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem. 
The Lord has removed the judgment against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You have no further misfortune to fear. On that day, it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear not, O Zion, be not discouraged. The Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty Savior. He will rejoice over you with gladness and renew you in his love. He will sing joyfully because of you, as one sings at festivals. The Word of the Lord. Blessed are the people whom the Lord has chosen. Blessed are the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. Blessed are the people Give thanks to the Lord on the harp. With the ten-string lyre, chant his praises. Sing to him a new song. Pluck the strings skillfully with shouts of gladness. Blessed are the people whom the Lord has chosen. Blessed are the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. But the plan of the Lord stands forever, the design of his heart through all generations. Blessed the nation whose God is the Lord, the people he has chosen for his own inheritance. Blessed are the people whom the Lord has chosen. Blessed are the Our soul waits for the Lord, who is our help and our shield. For in Him our hearts rejoice, in His holy name we trust. Blessed are the people whom the Lord has chosen. Blessed are the people the Lord has chosen to be His own. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Mary set out in those days and traveled to the hill country in haste to a town of Judah, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the infant leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, cried out in a loud voice, Most blessed are you among women. And blessed is the fruit of your womb. But how has it happened to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For at the moment the sound of your greeting reached my ears. The infant in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed are you who believe that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So each day we talk about how. There are these images, these events that happen in the Old Testament really are types that get their fulfillment in the New Testament. And we see that particularly here today. Now, in the Old Testament, uh, in 2 Samuel uh, chapter 6, um, the Ark of the Covenant is going off into Jerusalem. And I want to show that this event here was on Luke's mind 
when he shared with us the events that happened in the visitation today. And here you hear Elizabeth saying, how does it happen to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? Now in 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 9, David says, taught pondering the idea of the Ark of the Covenant going into Jerusalem, he says, how is it that the Ark should come to me? He's in complete awe of the experience, just like Elizabeth is. And then she says, the infant leaped in her womb when Mary came. And whenever in second chapter, uh, chapter six, verse 12, David says, it says that he leaped for joy when the Ark of the Covenant was coming into Jerusalem. Do you see that Luke had in his mind that Mary is the new Ark of the Covenant? Those of you that did our Bible study on Mary will remember that very, very well. That, that whole week where we talked about Mary being the Ark of the Covenant and talked about these particular scriptures here. Luke is telling us today that Mary is the true Ark of the Covenant. Let's watch this video of this event that happened. And I want you to think of Mary as this new Ark of the Covenant. Come, Mary. You'll be comfortable. Here we go. May the Lord keep us safe on our journey. God bless you, child. Esther, Esther, take us to my sister in Bethany and tell her, tell her I'll be with her for Passover. All right, yes, I'm with And go safely yes. on your journey. How did you know? Who told you? A messenger from God. And he told me another thing. A thing even more wonderful. You're blessed among women and blessed shall be the fruit of your womb. I too am highly favored that the mother of the chosen should come to me. From the moment your greeting reached my ears, the child in my womb leapt for joy. My soul doth magnify the Lord. And my spirit hath rejoiced in God, my Saviour, for he has looked kindly upon the most humble of his handmaidens, and he has told me that all generations shall call me blessed. He who is mighty has done unto me a mighty thing. Wasn't that beautiful? to watch her and watch that experience back and forth. I wonder what it's really, really like. There's, an, there's from the, uh, the movie, Jesus of Nazareth. That's what the event was like as the author thought of it back in those days. But also too, I wanna to make one more point here. Mary was a very active participant in this experience that God was having for her. And listen to this commentator write about the visitation and Mary as an active participant 
uh, and as one who believed. He writes, Mary, as an active participant in the plan of God, having opened herself up entirely to the plan, Mary, without fail, pursues it. This visitation scene speaks to disciples' own involvement in God's providence. Instead of being idle onlookers, they are called upon to play their part in God's destiny for themselves and for others. By living out the implications of their vocation, they find themselves involved, like Mary, in a journey. Only the geography is different. Theirs is not a trek into the hill country. Rather, it is the relentless, almost restless movement of meeting their obligations to others, whether at home, at play, at work, wherever. Their openness to God's directives will ensure the success of their journey. Isn't that beautiful? Mary as the participant, the, the one who believed as a participant in God's work of salvation. Here's our question for today. If Mary was indeed an active participant in God's plan, how are you an active participant in God's plan for your life and for the lives of others? God bless you and looking forward to seeing you once again tomorrow.